Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and this week we were supposed to be looking at Melty Brain code. Uh, as you can see, the Melty Brain is not up on the shelf at the moment and I am, I am looking at Melty Brain code. It's just that Melty Brains are complicated as most of you would probably be aware. That's why they're called Melty Brains. Uh, and as such, it's not actually done. So, uh, Instead, we're going to do a quick little lone bot build so that I can get running on back into the Melty Brain. Hopefully, I'll have the Melty Brain finished by next week. If not, we'll have another little build uh, between now and then. I'm basically, most of my time is spent working on the Melty Brain right now. So, we'll uh, we'll see how we go. But so, I'm going to be doing another lone bot. This one, of course, is going to be for the club that I fight in, ARC. There's always lone bots there uh, ready to go and they are mostly provided by builders but then a couple by the organizers or a bunch by the organizers as well speaking of uh loan bots and arc and all of that uh check out the arc youtube channel if you're looking for more stuff to watch right about now uh they've literally just started doing kind of like highlights for the backlog of a past couple of fights or a couple of months of fights uh so if you're looking for more stuff to watch have a look at that there's also apparently going to be some uh, lone bot builds and stuff going up there as well. So I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. Uh, yeah, anyway, getting back onto the lone bots. My biggest problem with building lone bots is the conception of the lone bot itself. The last time we tried to do this, uh, we ended up with that kind of lifter grabber design that didn't kind of lift or didn't kind of grab. And that's kind of my problem with these things is that I get a cool idea in my head and it's, I don't think about how well it's actually going to drive and how well and how easy it is to actually control it. Also, I have a couple of pistol grip controllers now uh, that have been meaning to use for something for quite a while. So today we're going back all the way back to the basics and we're going to design a basic wedge. Basic wedge. So this is what I came up with. Uh, I am going to try and merge micro dot which is one of my favorite uh wedgie robots that i've ever built with this which is actually an unnamed uh undercutter lone bot that i originally came up with ages and ages ago back when the lone bot rules stated that the lone bots had to be servo powered weapons so you can see in here there's a nice little hole for a servo mount and yeah this was supposed to be a servo run undercutter can you see what i'm talking about with coming up with interesting ideas that just make a terrible, terrible lone bot. That's exactly what this is. This thing, uh, it, it's an interesting shape. It's an interesting design, but uh, trying to have this work and have a new person drive this, especially if it's their first ever robot, that's, it's just, it's, it's a little bit too far. So what we're gonna try and do is we're gonna take this shape, I'm gonna slim it down just a little bit. I'm gonna try and get this into a 10 inch cube. I am not gonna personally test that. I'm just going to build something that's a little bit smaller so that maybe it might fit into a 10 inch cube. And I think it will come down to your wheel selection too because the wheels are gonna stick out the edge here. So you put thick wheels on this thing, it's probably not going to. Um, fit in a 10 inch cube but if you put thin wheels on it it might fit in a 10 inch cube i don't i don't know but anyway so we're going to take the prongs off of uh micro dot actually we might make some new prongs because these ones are obviously absolutely massive but then we're going to stick the prongs onto our three faces and we're going to leave this nice little like back curve in place because i really like the shape obviously this thing was inspired by valkyrie from BattleBots, uh and i really like the shape of this chassis i just want to triple prong up the front, basically. Uh, yeah, so that's that's the idea. I think I should be able to knock a chassis up or knock a chassis design up pretty quickly uh, using these components. Also, as I said, we're gonna be using a pistol grip controller because I have a couple of these lying around, but this does mean that um, I need to do something different and that is actually gonna be this thing, which this is a prototype ESC I designed ages and ages ago uh, that's designed to take an Arduino on the back of it to run the control system. So it's a bit big, a bit bulky, uh, and I probably wouldn't end up making these for any considerable number of them because they're just too heavy really to be used in combat robots. But this was my very first attempt at building an ESC and I just, I have one left. I actually put one of these into the cat video 
or the Cat Will It Bot video that I did for William Osman. Um, yeah, so I put one of those in there and I've got one spare. So we're gonna try and jam this together and put that into here as well, uh, just because I can actually program this so I can do the mixing that is needed for the RC controller. Chassis is printed, so check it out. I've actually, I've shrunk it a little bit even off of this version and definitely shrunk it based on Microdot. Like there is a massive amount of difference between this and this. Uh, so this is actually looking pretty good, I think. I did realize I made two little mistakes in this when uh, I was printing it. One, it doesn't actually have anywhere for the switch to sit. It does have a notch in the top plate for the switch uh, to be actuated, but it doesn't actually have supporting rails in here. There should be something here to actually lock the switch into. So the version that goes up on my mini factory will have supporting rails. And also I put a hole for the LED here when in reality uh, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It makes more sense to have the, um, the LED sticking out the back, mostly just so that you don't have to have anything attached to the lid. Because uh, one of the things that does actually kind of annoy me is when I do this and I attach a light to the lid and therefore uh, when you take the lid off it still kind of like has to dangle around behind the chassis because it's attached to the electronics which are attached inside the robot. So yeah. Um, other than that though this print came out pretty well. I've cleaned up support material in underneath the prongs. Uh, there's a very, very good chance that this is going to be back heavy and like Microdot did, it's going to raise up as it tries to drive. So there's space in underneath each of these to hot glue in nuts and bits and pieces to try and avoid that. Um, other than that, we should be ready to get everything in here. Uh, I've got wheels which I've got set up to be uh, as thin as possible. So these have a little nubbin on the front of them, which I've now put out rather than in so that the wheel sits way closer into the motors than it did before. Uh, and we're just gonna try this, I think. Uh, although I do need to get a couple more pieces of um, support material out from here so that we can actually put screws in because that would help quite a lot. Like that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw the motors in and throw this in. Uh, with this set up and hot glued, the switch hot glued in place, we should only really need to add a battery and we should be good to go. So it really should be the 3D printer to print this, a screwdriver and the hot glue gun, and then we should be done, I think. Um, yeah, let's give that a whirl. So that's everything packed in here and the next step is actually not one that I would normally even show on camera uh, because I just kind of get it done and then move straight on into the actual drive testing and stuff. But a very, very big part of doing all of this is actually doing a um, wheels up test, making sure that everything that you've done in here is correct and all of the motors are connected in the right spot and all that kind of stuff. So normally I'll find an old chassis that I can set the thing up so that the wheels aren't uh, sitting on anything. I will also, most of the time, undo all of the wiring that I've just done um, because the first pass of the wiring is usually actually not the greatest anyway. And two, because you need, I need to get to these connectors in here. So I've got connectors running between all of my motors uh, and the ESC that I've built so that I can swap these over really quickly because inevitably I've either got the left motor and the right motor connected the wrong way around or I've got the motors connected the wrong way around. So when I try and drive forwards, one goes forwards and the other goes backwards or something like that. So the first test is always to do a wheels up and it's always a good idea to just kind of unpack the wiring a little bit just to make sure that nothing shorts against each other or anything like that. Not that it should, there should be enough hot glue and everything around the place to stop it from doing that, but you never know. So pistol grip at the ready, let's turn this guy on. So obviously there's going to be no startup sound because it's my own controller. So we've got movement on one.
Hmm. I think, looking at that, these motors are dead. Or this battery is dead. Either way, something needs to be changed. Half a second. Finally got it all sorted. Uh, yeah, the ESC that I designed has some issues and errors in it. Uh, which, yeah, that's the reason I'm redesigning that and doing that again, as well as the fact that it's just way too massive. Uh, so, now with a different battery in, and also with the Arduino set up in, we get correct motion, which is great to see. All right, so now just need to jam the battery in and pack everything, and it should be ready for some hero shots and some testing. It's all together, but before we do anything else, I just want to make sure, or just want to test one quick thing. Does it wheelie? Uh, which I very much expect it will. Oh yes, <laughs> very, very much. A nice little pop at the start of the drive there. Not quite sure why it's turning hardcore to one side, but that's all right. The pop is what we needed to see. I do have a pile of uh, nuts here that we're going to hot glue in underneath. I did already jam one of them in there. Uh, mostly I was kind of testing to see if they would fit any in here. And that one went in and did not come out. These are M6 nuts. So we're going to hot glue a whole bunch of these in under here. And hopefully that will stop it wheeling. Also, I will say we're at 110 grams uh, without nuts and then about 125 with 126 with so there's still even room in here to add more stuff if we really wanted to Test two. Whoa, okay. All right, so we're still getting a little bit of lift, but you can actually take off without it now. So that's a good sign. That's, that is a good sign. Uh, might need a little bit more weight in there than I've packed in, but I think that's all I'm gonna pack in here for the moment. Uh, you could definitely fit more nuts in here or you could use lead uh, weights, like fishing weights. That would work too. Probably work even better than these, to be honest. <laughs> but yeah, look at that. And still, still getting a significant amount of wheelie out of that. Hmm. But it's coming together quite nicely. So there you go, it is done. Uh, I'm gonna call this guy Dent, as in uh, Trident, but I kind of need a short name because like I said, there'll be, well, I'm not sure if I said, did say this, but I'll be making probably three of these eventually, a red one, a green one, and a blue one. In fact, the red one is even on the printer right now with the upgrades uh, that I suggested I was gonna make kind of part way through this video. Uh, so I'll be making a couple of these, but this is the first ever design and first ever run. Uh, these files will be up on my mini factory, hopefully by the time this video goes out. So look for those a link in the description. Uh, anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this quick little one uh, that I kind of just threw together while I was quickly uh, also working on the Melty Brain. Hopefully, fingers crossed, Melty Brain will be next week, but I, I don't know. It really does depend on how well I can get the thing working. I'm basically just going for the original, like the initial spin up and orientation lock and getting all of that to work is, it's finicky and fiddly. Um, anyway, that's it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed that and I will see you in the next video.